everyone. Welcome to week eight of year two of the Religious Education Initiative. This is day one. We're continuing through Genesis uh, with chapter eight. These last several weeks we have been leading up to the great flood that came upon the world in the time of Noah. Last week we saw the flood finally arrive after God gathered the animals and had all of them go aboard the ark with Noah and his family. Before the flood began, God gave a final warning and left the door of the ark open for seven days before the rain began to fall, so that anyone willing to repent and be saved could enter the ark. After the seven days, God closed the door and the, door and the flood began. It rained for 40 days. Today we will see how the flood ends, so the beginning of chapter 8. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of a hundred and fifty days, the waters had abated. And in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and sent forth a raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground, but the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him in the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put forth his hand, and took her, and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth a freshly plucked olive leaf. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days, and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go forth from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring forth with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may breed abundantly on the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. So Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. And every beast, every creeping thing and every bird Everything that moves upon the earth went forth by families out of the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal, and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. There is a ton that we could talk about today. Uh, we should mention that the first thing Noah does after he leaves the ark is he makes a sacrifice to God. This is a matter of communion with God, we should be clear. Uh, this is not the sacrifice that we might see in other places that is uh, a sin offering uh, that hasn't yet been established. Uh, we don't get a clear sense here of what's going on, but it's, it's, we might call it a thanksgiving offering, but this is an offering of communion with God. And although it says that God smells the odor and is pleased, what it's really saying is God is partaking, he is sharing in this sacrifice together with Noah. That's the point of, of mentioning the, the smell. Uh, this was the idea in the ancient world. Human beings would eat their part of the sacrifice, and the God 
or in this case, God Most High, would smell it. This is just sort of just a baseline understanding of how sacrifice works. It is a sharing, a meal that those who are making the sacrifice share with the God they are worshiping. Uh, this is a moment of reconciliation, of union between God and Noah and his family as they leave the ark. That theme of reconciliation is what we see emphasized with the dove and with the the olive uh, the, uh, the olive branch olive leaf uh, as it gives it here. Um, I've seen it uh, as a branch, I think, in, in some other translations. Um, I might be wrong. Check me and uh, you know, tell me if I if I messed up. But uh, we should understand that this moment where the dove comes back with the, the olive uh, the olive leaf. This is a tremendously significant moment. First of all, it's significant for the people who are on the ark. They've been there for months. They have no guarantee that they're ever going to get off the ark. They don't know what's going to happen. They're uncertain. They don't know if the waters are ever going to go away or if this is just their new world. Uh, you know, see Kevin Costner's Waterworld. Not a nice thing. Uh, great for a movie. No, never mind. Uh, not great for a movie. Uh, if you've ever seen it, uh, I am not recommending it. Beside the point, they've been on this boat with the animals for a long time, at close quarters, to see the dove coming back carrying a fresh grown olive leaf is a sign that the judgment is passing, that they will not live out the rest of their lives on this boat, that they we'll be able to live on the earth again. Uh, second, uh, from this moment of, of emotional uh, intensity experienced by those on the ark and now recorded in the scripture, uh, both the dove and the olive take on a profound significance uh, as signs of peace, as signs of reconciliation. Olive oil becomes important. Uh, we're going to see another significance kind of emphasized on day two, but for now, just we need to pay attention because if we ever see or hear someone talk about waving an olive branch uh well this is associated with uh with the peace that comes uh between god and humanity the end of judgment that is marked by this moment with the dove coming back uh, there are other things we could say uh that they're on the boat uh, on the ark all together for over a year uh, a year and a few days uh, from when they uh, go onto the uh, ark to when they come off it again. Um, but um, the main point of this is that the judgment ends. Uh, we might also see in the final, uh, the final paragraph here, uh, when God says, I will never again curse the ground because of man, uh, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, uh, all of these things that are characteristic of the life of the world shall not cease. We might read into this a promise from God that, you know, because he says, the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So he's not saying human beings are going to stop sinning, so now I don't have to judge them again. He's saying, the next time I will find another solution. And we can see this as a, as a prophecy, as an anticipation, even as a foreshadowing, as a promise of the Incarnation, because this is the way that the Lord ultimately deals with human sin, not by annihilating, uh, annihilating all of humanity, but by coming himself to bear the consequences, to bear the burdens, to bear the grief and the death uh, that comes from sin, and to deliver us by participating in it, by uniting himself with us in death uh, and rising from the dead. Uh, so uh, this is this is a profound point. God does not destroy the world now, but he saves the world by uniting himself with it. Uh, so no more flood. Uh, anyway, I'll see you all for day two. Uh, God bless you all.